The Otago Peninsula is a haven for some amazing wildlife, but some of it is not so easily seen. Let's go have a look around those rocks, but you'll need to use wet hands when picking up any animals you find. Look, there's a shore crab. They hide under the shade and shelter of rocks so they don't dry out or become a meal. Use the guide to see what it is and don't forget to put it back. But we're here to look for buried treasures. At low tide, the mud flats look barren, but they're peppered with tiny holes. If you look carefully, you can see the fan-shaped pattern that a crab has made when digging its burrow. Let's check the guide. This one belongs to the stork eyed crab. Unlike the crab from the rocky shore, the stork eyed can't breathe outside the water, so it keeps some inside its gills as well as using surface water to breathe. Away from their burrows, they need to hide from seagulls or oyster catchers, so they bury themselves in the sand. It rocks its body up and backwards, shoveling sand with its claws until only its eye stalks are visible. There's another crab that burrows in the sand. This one pushes sand up and out in balls. It's the tunnelling crab. It tunnels by scooping out a small hollow, then enlarges it by moving back and forth, using its legs to push out the sand. Any disturbance out in the open, and the crab drops, into a threat posture, then buries itself. It has a thick covering on its exoskeleton to protect against sand abrasion. It also has a nifty trick that the stork eye doesn't. It can recycle water back into its gills. You can see it trickling across its back. This allows it to burrow higher up on the beach in drier sand. But anywhere on the beach, both crabs are very well camouflaged. If you weren't looking, you wouldn't even know they were there.